Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. I am your host, Matt Connerton, and uh, we are live on this uh, Wednesday. It's a very cold Wednesday, January 20th, 2016. And uh, joining me uh, this week, who uh, was uh, kind enough to sit in for me last week on the show, of course, John Hopwood. John, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, Matt. We just uh, finished up Ward 13, which was a great show with Paul Lyon. After a we, rocky start. We eventually got him, <laughs> got him on, the, on the Skype, yeah. <laughs> ah, technology. Um, no, but that was a very interesting discussion, so I encourage people to go back and, and uh, look for that online. And uh, will, the, will the, the version that goes up on YouTube, will, that, will it be the full show, or are you going to cut it down? Or <laughs> <laughs> You can have a copy, whatever I you think, want. I think the you full, can I cut think it the, down or whatever. I think, I think the full show is fun <laughs> to see the trials and tribulations. We're trying to get Skype up and fly it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Which brings us to your device there. That looks like a small nuclear device. And we were talking on my bomb? show uh, a suitcase bomb there? about Donald Trump yeah. being near the nuclear football. Yeah, well, he was asked by Hugh Hewitt in a debate. Uh, and I know you didn't see this, but um, and the Young Turks lampooned it as the worst debate answer ever. He was asked about the nuclear triad. And uh, and what he thought was uh, was the most what would be his priority in terms of the nuclear triad because these Republicans are always talking about all oh, the military is just decimated and needs to be the built nuclear up. triad being uh, do we still have the B fifty twos I think so yeah you got the missiles from the submarines B fifty twos and ICBMs yeah yeah and he had no idea so he just rambled for for a minute and and hugh hewitt of course for those who don't know is a conservative radio talk show host so you know you can't say it's oh the liberal media was attacking trump at the debate or whatever because some people will say that um because a lot of conservatives you know anything anything they don't like that they hear oh it's the liberal media again um and trump just kind of trump didn't understand the question and just kind of rambled for a minute about, well, you know, I, I think you have to understand and respect that the, the force of these weapons is very powerful, so you have to have someone you trust. And he just kind of rambled and tried to do that thing where, you know, he knew he knew he didn't understand the question, but he's trying to act like he did. And Do you really think he didn't know? Um, yeah, I think he didn't know. You really think he didn't know? Because he's a baby. Well, when was he born? Was he born in 48? He's, he's a baby he's, boomer. He's, yeah, he's pushing 70. So ba all baby boomers, including myself, a late one, we were born under the cloud of nuclear war. And that was a oh, real yeah. thing to us. That was an all... Uh, look at how, how you're starting out your program. Yes, but yes. But you're 10 years younger and the Soviet Union collapsed. Now, I can't... It's really hard to explain what that meant to grow up under that of oh, yeah. nuclear annihilation and there's two superpowers that could destroy each other mutual assured destruction all the movies when reagan became president they had these tv movies the right? day after that we're all going to get wiped which my up. which my parents let me watch which probably wasn't a great idea but the one we all watched uh, when i was young was on the beach where Yugoslavia nukes Albania and the I whole world blows up. I didn't and know about that movie. <laughs> Fred Astaire, Gregory Peck, and I think uh, Ava Gardner in Australia and New Zealand, and the nuclear cloud's coming. So they all know they're going to die. Yeah. And that's the one everybody watched. Oh, uh, wow. You know, it's non graphic. I... You don't see anybody dying. Is it a good film? I can't remember. I just remember Fred Astaire. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I see. was I the great dancer getting into his. Uh, he, was, he got into his uh, sports car, closed the, uh, you know, turned it on, and cl like closed the garage with a big smile on his face, like only Fred Astaire could have. Right. So he killed himself rather than to die like that. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, so we all dealt with this. Oh, I, I had a very unhealthy preoccupation with yeah. it growing up. I really did. So he has to have thought about it. Well, I it's think just he, did, he I, just doesn't he, give a damn, you know. I think he didn't know what nuclear triad means. That's that's what it is. I I think he just had no idea what he, he oh, was asking. Oh, then he got thrown him. by just the word because. Yeah. But uh, what startles me is the fact that people don't even think about nuclear war anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was uh, the Democratic debate in uh, which was up at St. A's, one of the people asked Hillary Clinton, you know, what do you do in the Middle East, uh, Syria? Oh, we'll have a no, no fly zone. She says. And we'll shoot, you know, a no-fly zone meaning you'd shoot down planes. Right. And she says, are you saying you'd shoot down a Russian warplane? 
right. which is an act of war. That oh, that's uh, a trigger for uh, and she for calamity. And she, you know, sidestepped it. This yeah. is something nobody would ever have talked about until recently. Well, in the you know Republican I mean? debates, they talk about yeah. it. Uh, Chris Christie, you know, because he wants to be that tough guy. He said, oh, absolutely, I would shoot down a Russian plane. You know they have, like, the fifth-generation fighter, and we don't because we screwed ours up. No, I didn't know. <laughs> really? There's a debate over whether the Russian fighter can take ours. Oh, really? Because that fifth, that what is it, F-35 is just complete boondog really screw up oh no but i didn't know that when it comes to arms you know the soviets uh and their avionics they're they're always very good yeah and i'm sure under uh putin in the last 10 years putting billions into mm -hmm. defense uh, oh no doubt well at, at, at one of the republican debates uh there was a moment where rand paul I, we might have talked about this before he he's actually you see him on camera just shaking his head right at how crazy these people sound because they're all carly fiorina she's terrifying she talks about uh you know she she also said she'd shoot down a russian plane if it flew into the no-fly zone and whatnot and rand paul to his credit i mean very directly said you can't do that uh, you're going to get us into World War III if you shoot down a Russian plane. The no-fly zone is crazy. He was the only one to say that. The rest of them, that was the same debate where John Kasich said, I think it's about time we punch the Russians in the mouth. It's like, you people are nuts. Well, the first crazy talk. The first thing is Turkey already did shoot down. Turkey and NATO allies shot down a Russian war plane. Right. And, which gave... Putin an excuse to send in more SAM uh, missiles, you know, mm -hmm. surface-to-air missiles. But then there's the reports from Al Jazeera and other uh, sources that Turkey's been supplying thousands of tons of oil to ISIS, ISIL, or whatever the hell it's called. Mm -hmm. And tons, that's how you, T-O-N-N-E-S. I think it's 2,200 pounds. It's like a, 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 a what is it, a, 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 a ton in a kilometer or something. Okay. That's how you measure oil. Yeah. So Turkey, NATO, is supplying, could be supplying ISIS, ISIL. Would that surprise you? No. There's other stuff, you know, I've heard, uh, things that wouldn't surprise you. Yeah. The United States has been very provocative. Yeah. Uh, Christ, we were, we were even provocative to a degree under Clinton. But uh, when we, we put a pipeline to skirt Russia f to, from uh, the Caspian Sea, but it's controlled by Putin now, because he's taken the part of Soviet, mm. former Soviet Georgia that has it. So Putin tomorrow could cause a, uh, a depression the likes, he could just shut down the energy sources to Europe. Sure, sure. So it's, it's, it's just, I've just turned off to all this, because yeah. it's crazy talk. Yeah. It's like, when you when I say, do you really think that he thinks that? I don't think these people think think or they just say anything. You know. <laughs> On the other hand, Trump says that uh, he thinks he'd get along really well with Putin. Um, not necessarily a bad thing. You mean they'd go around whoring or something like <laughs> Probably. that? Probably. <laughs> well, this, uh, isn't his? Uh, he had one Czech wife who's technically that's a Slav. Isn't his current wife Russian or Ukrainian? I don't know. I don't know anything about her. John, is there some way John? Uh, I've never really. I've only seen one picture of out, this yeah. woman. Yeah, I, I have. Uh, I isn't have she no a fashion idea. model? I don't know. Putin wife. I'm just gonna Google Putin wife and see what we get. Mm. I have a picture on my thing of Putin and a, a walrus. Lud Ludmia. Ludmila Lewich is it? Oh, it says, oh, are they divorced? It says married uh, from 1983 to 2014. Or did Who's she Who's he married to now? I don't know. Was she a fashion model? She's very beautiful in this uh, picture. Who's this woman he's running around with? Oh, I don't know. Huh. Oh, he has a girlfriend. He does have a girlfriend. It's a Vladimir Putin's girlfriend has given birth. That's according to oh, the we're talking about. I thought we were talking about Trump. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about Putin. Oh, let's see what's Trump's wife. Well, Trump. Yeah, who's going to be the next first lady? Yeah, I don't. I don't even remember uh, Trump's uh, wife's name. Well, you, there you go. There's. Uh, I remember uh, what was uh, when I was a kid. Who did he get divorced from? And it was a really Ivana. big deal. Ivana Trump. Yes, she was a Czech ice skater on the Olympic team. Oh, okay. And uh, he's he's if, as I said, we were talking. Uh, I don't know if it was on my show earlier, but we're talking about it. When oh, you watch Donald Trump. Melania or Melania. Oh, Everest okay. Said, who's, yeah. who's Donald Trump's? This is his wife, That's right? That's his wife. Is it yeah. number three or number four? I think it's number three. Wow, and, she is beautiful. She does look like a model. Yeah. And what's her name? Melania or Melania? M-E-L-A-N-I-A? -A? What's her maiden name? 
Uh, Nave or Navs? She have a patronomic? Navs. Where's she said, from? Said, uh, oh, she's German. He's got a German wife. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Okay. Um, she's too young to be a former Stasi agent from East Germany. Yeah. <laughs> yep, she was a model, and then, uh, well, then she married Trump, I guess, according to Wikipedia. America, <laughs> this is the best you can do, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is the best we can do, right? I guess so. I guess so. I do think it's going to be Trump. It's funny. Uh, I think he'll be the nominee. I don't think he'll be president, but... Um, as we, we're, we're talking a little bit on your show about, there's a lot of Republicans who are really clinging to this idea that he's going to flame out somehow, and that Jeb or Rubio or someone more acceptable, an establishment, more establishment Republican, will uh, will be the nominee. But I, but they're dreaming, they're delusional. Like, he's definitely going to win New Hampshire. What's Jeb at? Jeb is three uh, percent. I don't know. I don't know. Nationally, something something uh, in the single digits. I think they're spending all... seventy million dollars. Oh yeah, I get in the mailbox every other day. In the mailbox, there's there's something from the Jeb campaign. The right to rise. From yes. LA. Yeah, yes. The pack. I thought that was something like you know. Uh, it sounds like let's have a right to, re to a revolution. Or yeah, something, yeah. You know? That's funny coming from the Bush family. You You're know? right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeb is no uh, revolutionary. He. It was a thing about one of the things was about. Uh, the liberals have come to take your guns, and I'm the person that's going to stop them. And I think he took Rubio, and and you look at it, it's from 2009. Was Marco Rubio anybody? What was he, uh, on, like, the school board in Tampa <laughs> or something in 2009? It's like uh, Gatsis with Joyce Craig, you know, uh, solicited some things when she was on school board. Somebody says, oh, let's have a city tax. So she gave it in. They dug it up and sent the card out. That's yeah. politics. Yeah. Although um, I, I was always just, read those, you know, the footnotes. I remember hearing one of the debates, and she didn't bother to. Uh, this is kind of a side thing, but uh, on uh, 95.3, you know, they were playing all the the debates. What's 95? The mayoral debates, yeah. the local station here here in this building, and um, and I remember uh, Gatsis had brought that up, and she didn't bother to. Um, she, you know, she probably just needed to. Uh, maybe for next time, she'll sharpen up her debate skills a little bit. But she didn't really articulate that. No. That's not true. She she did a, a poor job of refuting it. I think. But, uh, uh, let's not talk about Ted Gatzis. You know? Yeah, yeah. We already live in Gatzis land. Is uh, it? But I heard he's going to rename it Creamland because that's his favorite place to eat. Oh well, you know he that used to be his, used his to be. place. Yeah. To now he's he's looking rather svelte in comparison to how he used to look. Oh yeah. Yeah. But uh, that uh, big emblem in the back, they're going to chisel off Manchester, and it's going to be Gatzis land. Yeah. Like uh, he said on Ward Thirteen, uh, Jimmy Stewart never was born. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Lionel Barrymore, what is it? It's Potterville, right? Mr. Potter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's a prostitute, <laughs> pawn shop, or everything. Yes. Uh, but that's that's for my show. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I've I've given that up. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, it's hard to. But let's going. Ba Speaking of Republicans, well, uh, going back to Trump, uh, I said I've never seen a field of a major party field a group of candidates <laughs> like I'm seeing. You know, whatever you could say about Romney, he had been a governor for four years. Yeah. He'd been a successful businessman, and he wasn't out of the mainstream. Right. Romney, to me, I always felt that, I mean, he seemed competent. You know, yeah. I didn't agree with him on everything, although I don't know what he really believed. I mean, he right. was, to me, the, the ultimate flip-flopper. I mean, that guy would say one thing to one group of people and... In different regions, he would oh, he'd have yeah. different pitches. Oh, know? yeah. And then when confronted by the media, he'd act like he never said any of it. I mean, it's one thing to – I think the term flip-flopper gets thrown around too loosely sometimes yeah. because I think it's natural for people to change their mind on things and on issues and evolve and whatnot. But he just took it to such an extreme. He would say whatever anybody wanted to hear. In 2008, when he's running that time, he portrayed himself as gay friendly in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Now his surrogates out in uh, where's John Huntsman? Utah. Yep. And this isn't Huntsman, but uh, Huntsman was supporting McCain because him and Romney have bad had bad blood. Yeah. But his surrogates out in Utah were trumpeting him as an anti-gay candidate, mm -hmm. and I know that for a fact because the person he was using was a friend of mine from university who later became you know the head of the uh, Bay State, you know, like gay, oh. lesbian alliance and everything. Yeah. And he was a Harvard-educated lawyer. 
he was on a, he was on the tax court. Mitt Romney uh, unceremoniously canned him. Yeah, and uh, huh. and they use you know Mitt here is friendly, and then we're using this guy because he was part of the anti bullying movement. Yeah, and uh, they were portraying it like Anita Bryant when I was a teenager. You know, uh, teachers are recruiting gays and this and that. Yeah, and in Utah. The Romney surrogates were using this guy who had gotten canned by Mitt Romney because he was honest. Yeah. You know, a, a good tax judge in Massachusetts should be making a hell of a living, but he, wa- <laughs> he was <laughs> honest. So they replaced him with a guy with a high school diploma. Yeah. That's, how, that's what Massachusetts is like, right? Right. Even then, the, and then they were using him out here. So yeah. they had bad, him and Romney had bad blood okay. between them and everything. I didn't know but that. But that's yeah. Romney, but that's a politician. Yeah. A politician's going to. People were criticizing. Uh, Chelsea Clinton was here. What was it last week? Oh, that was awkward. And I covered it, but I don't yeah. see any of any of the stuff the national media was saying. I didn't see it. I didn't see this. St- you know, she criticized uh, Bernie and took some hard shots. Like the fact is, what did she say? Yeah, I, I heard this it on cost, the PR that yeah. basically uh, saying that he was going to take away Obamacare, which I thought was a strange. When I heard this, I thought that was a strange thing to, it was uh, a, uh, to say. That was a, uh, if we're going, yeah, we're going to that. It's the it, Medicare for all thing is really what she's talking about. Right, that, you know, he's going to dismantle that. Yeah. And uh, we don't go to the, but it, it's all based on this argument that, number one, until, what was it, the last debate, Bernie had no no platform or any policy over the single payer system. Right. And then he came up with a four or eight page one. Well, you know, Hillary's got, you know, a policy oh, yeah. walker, eight billion pages. Of course. You know? <laughs> and uh, so they're saying, well, you know, he's going to dismantle Obamacare to, to do this, which right. isn't going to get passed. So it's, you know, we're in the, cl- the uh, cloud cuckoo land of political rhetoric. Yeah. But, Okay, Yo, boy, that's really terrible for them to say that, right? And what are they going to say about Bernie Sanders when he wins the New Hampshire primary? Right. When they find out what a democratic socialist means. Right. All they got to do is look at Wikipedia, friends. Right, right. <laughs> but I think it was awkward that she, because that's the first time we've seen Chelsea Clinton in that role, really, of attacking. I mean, she's always campaigned. You yeah, know, she campaigned for her last time. That around, was but. only. You know what it's like to be on TV or anything, or if you say something. Yeah. That wasn't the whole. I was there and saw the entire thing. Things get taken thing. out of context, yeah. You know, the big thing she. Uh, there was a Bernie plant at the end, you know, just somebody. Really, yeah. And about. We're going to have. Uh, college is going to be free. Yeah. And uh, she counted that well. College should be free for the people that can't afford it, right? Mm. And uh, it's a utopian idea. College is going to be free. Right. But uh, even in England and other places that used to have it, they, they've rolled it back. And to get into a university in England or France or anything, you know, they have strict tracking and stuff. Sure. Not everybody goes to, un- they call it university because, you know, it's the rich bitches that go to college. Right. But that's a <laughs> private prep school. Mm. But uh, she hit him with all the Bernie's programs will cost $19 trillion. How is he going to pay for it? They just hit, somebody just hit Hillary. Hers are going to be $1.1 trillion of extra right, spending. Right, right. But, uh, hey, what about this Ryan budget? Didn't Ryan and Obama make a deal? Yeah. And I hear it's just going to be all sorts of red ink, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got to win the election, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, this, uh, you know, I don't understand this cycle. Yeah. But I, I had brought up, too, uh, I was talking about something that you had said. Um, you know, people forget um, so easily that Bernie Sanders isn't actually a Democrat. He's an independent. No, he's, he is a Democrat that always called him a socialist. That's why I always liked him. If I was yeah. in a parliamentary system, I'd be voting for a social democratic party. You know? But in theory, even if he wins the nomination, the, the party... Uh, as a as a private entity or however you want to put it, I mean the the Democratic National Committee they can just say, nope, doesn't matter, right? You can and, go to court or anything. I don't know how that they, they've already allowed him in. Yeah, he's you would go you go to a con. There hasn't been a contested convention. Seriously, what was it? Really, the last one was forty, nineteen forty, when 
Wendell Wilkie, sta- sport is sta- Wendell Wilkie stampeded. He was an industrialist. And they pushed Robert Taft, who was a very right-wing guy, and against you know involvement in World War II aside. Yeah. He was going to be the one that was FDR, you know, go up against FDR for his third term. And good luck to you. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, 68, I remember 68 as a kid. Yeah, my dad talks about that a lot. And yeah. the images were so stark. Like, I, you know, years later, just like last year's thinking, was that really Dan Rather that the cop punched in the stomach? <laughs> or is it just a memory that I'm making up? Right. You put it on. There's Dan Rather getting punched in the stomach by a Chicago cop. Yeah. But Hubert Humphrey already had the nomination sewn up. Yeah. But people – and the 72 one with McGovern was really interesting, but that was sewn up too. There hasn't been a, contest, a contested convention from the 40s. But if you went to a convention and there were all the Bernie Sanders people, let's say they're in a majority, mm-hmm. you could do anything. The, right. you know, the party could do this, could be that, create more superdelegates, do everything because it's yeah. a private entity. Right, right. But it would be disastrous, I think, wouldn't it? I mean because it would just uh – if, if either one, because they talk about that too, uh, the Republicans uh, have some sort of plan in place or R- Reince Priebus has been working on some idea that if they get to the convention and Trump is appears to be the nominee, they're going to figure out a way. You create superdelegates. Yeah, yeah. The primaries only came to the fore. 68 was the first year. There were only eight significant primaries. I think there was only 13 primaries. Yeah. Bobby Kennedy won eight of them. Eugene McCarthy came within the razor's edge of beating LBJ, a sitting president here in New Hampshire. And really? Knocked, knocked him out. He almost got 50% of the vote. Huh. And uh, in those days, you could really fiddle with the uh, machines. Really? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he might have actually beat LBJ with numbers. Huh. But you have to win, right? Yeah. And McCarthy won Oregon. But then Bobby Kennedy won California, and my mother turned off the TV, thank God, before <laughs> I saw what happened. But uh, primary 72 was another, 72 was, you had more primaries. And by 76, Carter was elected because of primaries. And that was considered a disastrous thing in a way, because he went down, you know. 1980, he sank beneath the waves. Right. So they started building more, you know, like super delegates. Okay. In the, the thing was, when Hubert Humphrey went to 68, went to the convention 68, there were only a minority of the delegates were picked by, by popular, if you call it popular vote, yeah. in a primary. And it was the party bosses. Okay. So they could just revert. To, they could create more super delegates tomorrow. So when they began that with the super delegates, was that meant to be kind of a fail safe? Well, you saw they created a lot of super delegates in 2008 because they were worried a uh, little about Obama. Mm. And uh, but they let it. You know, he won the nomination. Yeah. Well, it seems like a no-win situation because, for example, for the, for right. the Republicans, if you know, say they take it away from Trump using superdelegates or however at the convention, then he can just run third party and that will throw throw the election to Hillary. Or right. or if, uh, you know, or if Bernie has the delegates and they decide at the convention they're, they're going to make sure Hillary is the nominee, he could run third party. He's already an independent, technically. He's not a Democrat. He's an independent. So he could just say, well, I'm going to run third party. But he swore he I don't won. think he wouldn't. Yeah, I don't think he would. There's less risk there. Whereas Trump on, on, on the right, I mean, he's so – he's – kind of unpredictable, kind of a loose cannon. You know, he said he... And he's a billionaire. Right. He's not as rich as people think he is, but, you know, $3 billion is nothing to, you know... Yeah. (laughs) But, good God, was it 2008 where it cost $2 billion for one candidate to get elected president? Yeah. It's far more today. Yeah. But uh, I don't see uh, uh, how Bernie can get the nomination. So you don't think... What if... um, because this is my theory. So I've my prediction all along has been it'll be Hillary versus Trump and Hillary will be the president. But I would say that's close. That would be what I would pick at this point. Right. Because my thought was even if even if Bernie wins New Hampshire and let's say he wins and I think he has a shot at Iowa. Well, uh, like 538. You have to spell it all out. 538. That's how yeah. many electoral college votes there are. Is a great site. It's very accurate. Uh, they have Bernie just using polls. Yeah, has a seventy-three percent 
chance of winning the New Hampshire primary. But they have polls plus, which means all the endorsements mm-hmm. that she has compared to his, which means there's a factor going up to Tuesday yeah. when people go in. She's got an 80% chance to win the Iowa caucuses, which I was astounded. I thought Bernie was doing better. Yeah. And you know the Iowa has an effect on New Hampshire. Oh, absolutely. And it, uh, it, ha- it will, you know. I guess they can write it off. If he wins from the Clinton's uh, perspective, if he wins New Hampshire, they can say, well, he's next door to Vermont, favorite son status, you know. But well, it, what it will do is make uh, – <laughs> What's it going to do to New Hampshire right. you know, in 2020 or something? When if you have people like Trump and Bernie coming up, you know, one's a, one's a reality TV star that uh, ha- is a, uh, a, a higher class of a vinyl uh, siding, an old-fashioned <laughs> vinyl siding salesman. You know? yeah. Here's my sample cases. Uh, <laughs> what do you want? There's a, there's a saying, uh, a joke in the old uh, siding industry. Uh, what was it? Uh, you, the, the siding salesman makes the pitch, and of course he's out to utterly screw you. Yeah. And uh, the wife says, "Well, well, I'll take it in the brown." And he, the siding salesman says, "Of course you will." But uh, <laughs> I remember that. that, that yeah. See, once I'm aging myself. So remember when he who took over from Johnny Carson? The big Jay Leno took yeah. over from Johnny Carson. Yeah. One of the first jokes he said, "Some woman won the." Lottery, like $100 million, and they asked him, what are you going to do? He says, oh, I'm going to go out and get some nice vinyl siding. Yeah. And J- he said, yeah, you'll, and you'll find somebody that will give you that price, $100 million. Yeah, yeah. But that's who he is. You've got this hustler. With yeah. N- and then uh, I love Bernie, but he, how can he be elected? But here's the thing, though. So I've been thinking about South Carolina, so that's kind of the firewall for Hillary, with right? The, it has caucuses and primaries. But what if – see – I've been I've been operating under the assumption that South Carolina, once you get to the South, yeah. they're not going to vote for the Jewish guy from Vermont with the Brooklyn accent. Right. But then again, um, I wouldn't have guessed they would have gone for Obama either in the South. And well, they did. The, the and South, he yeah, won huge in, in, uh, vote, yeah. in the South Carolina primary. And, um, you know, uh, whereas Obama, I think Obama is basically a centrist, but he gets painted as sort of this uber liberal guy. And he was backed by Warren Buffett and the Union Bank of Switzerland. Right. (laughs) And bankers. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't come out of nowhere. But if Bernie can appeal to, see, I haven't seen any polling from South Carolina, have you? No, there are no polls. It's, it's. I don't understand why. Yeah, it's strange. It's frustrating. I've never seen it, and there's none uh, in the state. Nevada. We had the polls from Nevada. Yeah. The media. (laughs) <laughs> They're having fun. Listen, folks. There. Do you know how many people act? I'm going to tell you the two things that are, I think are fueling Bernie. And here's a guy I, I love since 1974 yeah. when he ran on the Liberty Union ticket, which is a socialist party. I think for the Senate in '74 up in Burlington, where my father lived at the time. Yeah. Before the Attorney General of Vermont drove him out to New York and huh. where you could get <laughs> greener pastures. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, what are the things? People think he's a Democrat. Right, right. People don't know. Yeah. You must, you've met people. Look at who's Ben Carson? Who the hell is that? Who's Ted? Who are these people? Yeah. But people think like uh, Bernie Sanders. Oh, he's a Democrat. He's a Democrat. He's a social Democrat. He's Lyndon Johnson, you know, this cracker barrel, pork barrel Democratic politician. Right. But he's not. Right. Uh, the word social democrat and democratic socialism comes from around 1972 when the socialist party of the united uh, socialist party which norman thomas was this guy used to always run on the socialist party they had nothing to do with uh, moscow yeah and it split in three parts the, <laughs> the socialist party became the the socialist party like the rump became the democratic so- what did they become the uh, democratic socialist party of uh, united states one party became uh, socialist party usa which bernie and the liberty union were affiliated with and michael harrington who you're too young he was a famous socialist he used to be in boston all the time he'd come to our classes give okay. speeches everything he created the social democratic socialist yeah. it's like almost a monty python skit <laughs> you know about who all these people are you know yeah. here's the party here the party there this happened on the, the hard left all the time yeah i studied all this stuff suddenly you know i'm uh, uh, i'm having people 
that I actually know, and we talked about this stuff years ago, suddenly rewriting history. Yeah. But the media, which just like they found John Edwards was an adulterer with a child. Yeah. Oh, my God. Do you think they? it, it just all of a sudden happened at once, <laughs> right? They're going to tear him apart because all you have to do is look at Wikipedia. Right. The other thing is a lot of people don't want to vote for Hillary. They want to send her a message. Rather than voting for O'Malley, who's a liberal Democrat, mm -hmm. a real liberal Democrat, he's got all the right positions and everything. He's been a mayor, a governor. Yeah. He's he took Baltimore out of hell, a hellhole, and everything. Rather than vote for him, yeah, he's they're he's, voting for Bernie. So it's yeah, almost he's like one percent. Yeah, it's almost like a vote for Bernie is a vote for Hillary, and a lot of people <laughs> say they're going to vote for Bernie. They're not O'Malley people. Right. Because the Clintons are to the right of the party. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Well, there's, um, there was polling data. And O'Malley's not. O'Malley right. got blindsided on the left by Bernie Sanders. Yeah. You know. Well, there was polling data a couple, it was either yesterday or the day before, that showed that um, like Hillary's unfavorability ratings are very high. Oh, yeah. And Sanders' favorability ratings are very high. And um, which probably explains New Hampshire. Now, there's also I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I, I, I was actually surprised that, you know, you look at the at this data and you get the impression Hillary is really disliked and distrusted by a lot of Democrats. And I wonder and people people look at Bernie as being just genuine. You know, he is he's not a slick politician. He's telling you what he really thinks. And, uh, and he, he is who he is. He just change his mind on the Brady bill. I've been a little confused about that. He was a uh, yeah. he was against the Brady bill. Yeah. Now he's for it. Yeah. His his his, his gun <laughs> control. Thirty years. <laughs> yeah. Afterwards. His gun control policies have been a little confusing to me. But I'm but I'm talking about the way people perceive him. I think people generally perceive him as being honest and, and forthright. Oh, he is who he is. Yeah. He, and he he you know. But what if South Carolina perceives him that way? Because here's the thing, if he does manage to win South Carolina, she's really in trouble. That's where the firewall is, I think, for Hillary. If, if she blows it in South Carolina, I think Bernie Sanders could very well be the nominee. Uh, if she can't win how there. How get through after Super Tuesday? Her, she has strength, too, in the South. I don't see her losing South Carolina. If, let's just say, if. I think he's going to win New Hampshire. Oh, I definitely do. Yeah. They, 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 where's Bill Clinton? Why aren't they got their number one, you know, talking about a thermonuclear device. Right. You've got the greatest politician oh, since yeah. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Oh, oh even and Republicans met, say that. I yeah. met both him and Reagan, and he beats yeah. Reagan. To, uh, yeah. Why isn't he here doing what Bill Clinton does? She's got him uh, trussed up and on a short leash, just like in 2008. Like I said, you know, John and Yoko. <laughs> She's not Yoko. Right. I really call Yoko. <laughs> but, uh, well, in I think she can be a, a very good president. She can stay on Don Putin, but she has a very high unlikability factor. Yeah, yeah. People don't like There's sexism. We're not talking about that. Mm -hmm. But see, there's also going to be women voting for her. Right. That this is our time, you know? True. From all ages, too. But. But the sexism, you can't uh, do that. But she's a hard person. Yeah. She is a hard, she's hard as nails. Yeah, I certainly don't think she's weak. I would never say she, that about her. She, that's not a weak person. But I wonder with Bill Clinton if they're trying to hide him because in 2008, yeah, he's, he's a great campaigner and everything, but there were a couple of moments where he really kind of, he seemed to be really losing his temper over, oh, like when Obama won South Carolina, and uh, and Clinton went on the attack, and he ended up looking kind of bad in that. I think he actually oh, did yeah, some I, harm. I was reading some notes from that, yeah, where he was, uh, yeah. They didn't look, because he had been the, the uh, remember they called the black, the African-American president. Yeah, right? Tony, uh, author yeah. Tony Morrison had called yeah. him the, the first black president, yeah. yeah. Um, there was that, I don't know if you ever heard the audio of it, that NPR call. He was on the phone with, uh, he was doing an interview with NPR, and. Somebody asked him a question about South Carolina. He didn't like it, and uh, I guess he took it as he, they were implying that there was a racial element to, uh, you know, which I don't I certainly don't think Bill Clinton is racist. But um, as he's hanging up, you hear him swearing because he thought he thought he was off the air, 
So you hear him uh, saying to one of his aides, like, I don't think I should take any S for that, and, you know, as he's hanging up. And it was like, I would never uh, uh, discount the fact that Clinton would do it deliberately like he did with Sister Soldier back in 1992 or something. Yeah. He, they're very tough and canny people. Yeah. They yeah. know how to play politics. And if, you know, we get going back to Chelsea Clinton saying, uh, you know, playing a little uh, game with them, if they think, if Bernie Sanders supporters think that's bad, wait until they look at it. Uh, mm. uh, let's go back to <laughs> 72. Here's the thing. Uh, why does somebody answer me this? In 1988, Bernie Sanders supported Jesse Jackson in the primaries. That's yeah. the first time they said, I guess, he ever went through the Democratic caucuses. Okay. Because they have Democratic caucuses up there. But you see so many rumors. But the rumor is he supported the Socialist Party USA candidate in 88 over Mike Dukakis, who became synonymous with liberal. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget in, what was it, the Naked Gun, the second one, uh, the guy, uh, who was that, uh, Leslie? Oh, What's Leslie his, Nielsen. You know, yeah. He's going, he's in a bar, and they got all these famous, like, disasters, the Titanic, the Hindenburg, and there's Mike Dukakis. In the tank? Was, was he, <laughs> he in the tank? He was one of the, yeah, yeah they you know, yeah, they got that pictures picture. of famous, uh, yeah. you know, Mr. Liberal went yeah. down sinking. Yeah. I can't, did he support Mike Dukakis, or is that just a rumor? What I do know is the woman that ran as the Socialist Party USA, which the Liberty Union supported, mm -hmm. She worked for Bernie Sanders. Okay. So yeah. is that the connection? There's plenty of stuff they're going to dig up because socialism has always been a bugaboo. And it's been the great bogeyman. They destroyed these socialist parties. We've talked about this before after World War I and then just completely destroyed the New Deal left-wing labor part of the Democratic Party after yeah. World War II. Two red scares. So... You're telling me they're not going to dig peep. The media is not going to dig this stuff up. But will it matter? Because I almost feel like Bernie has sort of masterfully. Do you want to pay taxes? No, I don't want. Tell me how many how much taxes you want to pay? Sixty percent income no, tax? No, hell no. Seventy. But here's the thing. <laughs> but he's been so he's been so um, the way he's presented himself. Like he doesn't even run from the word socialist. The way he's presented himself, I think he's almost inoculated himself from a lot of that because in New Hampshire, what are they going to what are what are they going to dig up that that he can't say? Well, yeah, of course. But that's the press me. isn't talking about the stuff I just talked about, is it? True, not yet. I know or who will, Bernie. Or will I it. know who Bernie Sanders. I know yeah. all the wars that went on in the seventies and the uh, over over that. Yeah. The reason the party broke up in seventy two is because Michael Harrington wanted to endorse George McGovern. Mm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and uh, I'm just saying. There's plenty of red meat, and they'll tear into him. Yeah. They'll tear into him. There's actually dumb bells out there that think he's a Democrat. They yeah. actually do, yeah. and they're listening to people that, you know, pretending he is. Yeah. I'm not going to pretend he's anything that he isn't. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'd prefer to have a parliamentary system. It's more demar democratic. We could vote for who we want. Right. And they don't have to pretend they're something they're not. Right, right. But we don't have that type of system. So in theory, though, like let, let's suppose he were to be the nominee and Hillary Clinton, let's say Hillary Clinton just totally blows it and he is the nominee. So then it's Bernie versus Trump. So what happens? Trump wins. You think so? Do you want to pay 70 percent, 80 percent taxes? No. Do you see all the things about what Europe, you know, uh, oh, they have to pay this, that, and the other thing? Yeah. Why wasn't there rearmament in England? Why didn't Neville Chamberlain rearm the UK? You know, Hitler's there snatching this, snatching that. He explained it. He was the Chancellor of the Exchequer, which is like the Secretary of the Treasury in two governments, yeah. the Labor government under McDonald, and then the Stanley Baldwin government. Well, the Labor government was a coalition government. And this is what he said. When taxes go up, the popularity of the government goes down, mm -hmm. and they're not going to tax you. Yeah, yeah. Taxes. Taxes. So taxes. if it's if what it, did well, how did Ted Gatzis pull out a victory over Joyce Craig, who people thought would win from five hundred to a thousand votes that last three weeks? He hit her with all tax. lies about taxes and he went back to Good a point, school yeah. board thing she put in. He sent out two things. Hit not him, right. people associated. <laughs> yes, yes. One was an <laughs> elaborate thing where her report card. She's gonna we talked about this oh, yeah. She's going to put a tax on the city. Yeah. 
We don't even have an income tax in right. the state. You can't even New York can't raise its income city or uh, you know the cities that do have it. It's yeah. a complete lie. Yeah. And then they sent out a little postcard to all the senior citizens. Yeah. That's how he po- cost two. I understand that it was two hundred thousand dollars. That the, the, his honor himself ponied up two hundred grand. I hope that's just a rumor. Yeah. In that last three weeks, and is not happy that he had to come up with the two hundred grand. <laughs> what was it all about? Taxes, taxes, taxes. Yeah. Read my lips. Taxes. Bernie Sanders means they're going to have 90%. You're going to be ruined. You're the, and they're going to pitch it to the white middle class, which is already being, you know, has anxieties like hell. Right. That's where you right. get Donald Trump from. Oh, yeah. He this to year, that. or was it last year, for the first time since like Truman in the Korean War, the middle class in America does, controls less than half of all the wealth in the United States. Yeah. People are under pressure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I see, yeah, Bernie, Ron, Alf Landon set a record in 1936 when uh, FDR had a landslide and he won eight electoral votes. Well, Bernie will get the three from Vermont and the three from Washington. Right. So <laughs> see, they be a landslide. It's just, I can't see it working any other way. Yeah. Let's say you have a president. Let's talk about 1936, the election. Let's say you have a president. Uh, Sanders is going to be a Republican Congress. Right. In 1937, let me remember the numbers. Uh, there were six. Uh, there were 96 senators. There's only 48 states. Republicans had 16. Plus, there yeah. was one independent that caucused with them. Think about that. 79 senators out of 96 were Democrats or farmer labor or progressive independent. He had the biggest majority in the House since Reconstruction when the South, with Democrats then, yeah. they weren't allowed in. Yeah. What happened? They stymied him the uh, way. He couldn't get his court packing plan, which everybody says, oh, that's so terrible. There was nothing terrible about that court packing plan. And, in fa- you know, I, I would agree that he was right about that. And the fact is, he backed on the Supreme Court because it's, they, they have, you know, the, he so intimidated the Supreme Court. Suddenly, you know, like the, the, uh, they, even the conservatives, they found one guy to vote for the New Deal. Oh, really? But yeah. the fact is, uh, at that time, you had the two terms, but it wasn't an official limit. So John Nance Garner, who had been the Speaker of the House, and he became Vice President because he had to bring Texas. Uh, you know, he's Texas. Sure. Joe Kennedy brokered that deal. The Joe Kennedy. Huh. And he became the running mate. But 1937, he decided he was going to be president in 19, you know, 40. That was him. Yeah. So he's going to, he hated John Nance Garner, like a lot of the Democrat populists. They hate Wall Street. Yeah. Everything yeah. I hear from people, oh, Hillary's too close to Wall Street. And that's true. Yeah, you hear that And constantly. Bernie this. Yeah. So was John Nance Garner, but he was conservative. They started stymieing everything FDR wanted in Congress. And it co- he had to pull back on the New Deal, and it caused a recession inside the Depression. So here's a guy with 79 senators, 333, mm. uh, you know, the Republicans had only like a 100-some-odd congressmen. And, and FDR, probably uh, the greatest president out there with Washington and Lincoln, He's being stymied by a Congress with his own party and a Supreme Court. Because guess what? That's the way it was set up. Yeah, yeah. We, the constitutional system was put th- into place in the 18th century by plutocrats, rich landowners, that reform is virtually impossible. Mm-hmm. There weren't. They had to amend the Constitution because it was so badly written, you couldn't elect the president in, in 1800. Yeah. <laughs> they had to go, you know, Aaron Burr, they were tied, you right. know. They almost got Aaron Burr for president, who yeah. shot Alexander Hamilton <laughs> four years later. And then they tried him for, tried him for treason, right, because he yeah. wanted his own country. Yeah. That's who we, nothing changes in America, <laughs> folks. Yeah. So here's the system. It's not meant for reform and change. Yeah. You know, that's why you have virtually a revolution in the 50s and 60s or with African Americans something. The Warren Court was a super legislature and it released a lot of the pressure by changing laws that technically Congress should have done. But let's be frank, 
the Supreme Court always acted as a super legislature. It would yeah. always be striking down laws. But it yeah. usually, almost in, through its entire history, except for four years in the early 40s, the FDR court, and then the Warren court, <laughs> always was doing it on the right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, what, is, uh, what is it? The 14th Amendment to the Constitution. Uh, that's, you know, it, it's one of the slavery amendments. You can look it up, you know. Citizenship. You're a citizen if you're born in the United States. Right. Which, you know, the Republicans are still bitching about. Right. And, uh, and maybe well, they have some legitimate things about, you know. But 14th Amendment. How, did the, how can that be used in the slaughterhouse cases by the Supreme Court to make a corporation an individual with individual rights? Right. What did that have to do with the 14th Amendment? Right. And the right. 14th Amendment was moribund. It wasn't used for how many years? 80 years until the U.S. Supreme Court, the Warren Court. And here's the great thing. Is it, it's either Gore v. Bush or Bush v. Gore, whichever the one the Supreme Court heard. Bush and v. Gore, yeah. The, the team that Jim Baker put together, James Baker, genius, they went after it on the 14th Amendment. They were violating Bush's rights on the 14th Amendment. And they got the justices who were hostile, like the, like the little fascist. What's his name? Scalia? <laughs> Scalia. Yeah. To, come, go, to rule on the 14th Amendment when everything they've written is the 14th. You don't use the 14th Amendment for right, that. Right, so right, right. You're, you're, <laughs> you're talking about a scenario. I'm just wondering what big business is going to do. What are the financiers are going to do? Mm -hmm. They're going to uh, step in. Uh, they... I don't see how I don't this is the weirdest time I've ever seen. Yeah, right? yeah, we we were talking about that on your show too, how it's the weirdest election. This isn't Nick, you know, 68 yeah. you had Nixon and Hubert Humphrey, but Hubert Humphrey had been a vice president, a senator, a congressman, yeah. and Nixon was Nixon, he'd been all sorts of things. Yeah. He's brilliant, but <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, you know, that was a tumultuous uh, election and people didn't want to vote for Hubert Humphrey, the great liberal because of the war, you know? Yeah. He didn't come out against the war for the last, like, talk about three weeks. Then yeah. suddenly his popularity, he finally got out from under LBJ. Yeah. And then in McGovern, McGovern was a great liberal. Yeah, I remember my mother talking about McGovern. The, yeah. yeah. It, but from Massachusetts, you know? Yeah, yeah. He got three, and I think they had 14, he got 17 or something. Yeah. Because Massachusetts now had 14 electoral votes okay and remember folks we have an electoral college they can vote for whoever they want they sure. can go there they could vote for me or you that's true a lot of people don't I realize don't think it's that. gonna happen though unless we get we can get our Norman friends the day the electoral call and we could raise like a cone of power yeah. <laughs> and then we're fight then we're having a duel here on the America who's yeah. gonna be president me or me and vice president. Do you remember, by the way, because you mentioned the uh, 88 convention with uh, Dukakis. Do you remember Jesse Jackson's speech? No, I remember Bill Clinton's speech, which oh. went over. And I remember uh, JFK Jr. Jesse Jackson's speech in 88, I still I still remember it. Because it was, um, I remember watching it with my mother. Because in the summers, I would go spend the Midwest out with, with uh, I'd go out to the Midwest to, yeah. and spend the summer with family. And we were watching it. And just, uh, just an incredible speech. Oh, uh, I was under virtual house arrest at NSA right then. So no uh, kidding. Yeah. Oh, so wow. uh, I, I, <laughs> you know, I, I guess I, I, I had free range of everything. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a better way of putting it. Yeah. I refused to take a uh, lie detector test. Really? Well, I fluttered in the first one. It was bullshit. But, oh, excuse me. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Oh, <well. laughs> Whoops. <It happens. laughs> Let's not talk about that. <laughs> yeah, Jackson's speech was incredible, and I remember the the crowd. Um. A song played after he spoke, and the crowd was kind of swaying and everything. And I remember my mother making an observation. She said, "There's no way Mike Dukakis could elicit this kind of reaction no. from a from a crowd. It's you know, it's too bad that Jesse Jackson couldn't be the nominee. Of course, that wasn't gonna that wasn't gonna happen. But you know, and then she was speculating: Is there a way that they could you know they could maybe change change this? Um, which I suppose they could have via super delegates or whatever. But obviously, that wasn't gonna happen either. But it's just an incredible speech. It's one of those moments." <coughs> And, of course, um, Obama's speech in 2004, yep. that was another great moment. That really kind of launched him right. into the national consciousness. But Bill Clinton gave a bad speech, but he came back. 
Yeah, yeah Clinton's yeah. speech. I remember it was uh, what was it like forty five minutes long, and right, then, and it was dull as and, oh. and they and they actually applauded when he said in, and in conclusion, yeah. and the crowd erupted in, a, in applause because they were so glad he was highly unusual because the guy you know so charismatic. Yeah, yeah. But what happened? Mike Dukakis came out of that convention. Was he twenty points up on Bush? Or some double digits. Well, there's always then, a post-convention sh- bump, though, anyway. And why did Mike Dukakis tank? And well, not because of the tank? No, I, I remember my, uh, the woman that, you know, <laughs> caused all the trouble in NSA. But no, <laughs> that's not true. But in some ways it was. <laughs> but uh, we were living together. Or where were we at that time? But she was saying about 88, the election. She says, why isn't Mike Dukakis fighting back against this? Yeah. And I explained, he's a Greek, his father was a Greek. In Boston, everybody's so buttoned up. Everybody had to be a wasp, and Greeks are so, you know, florid and yeah. this and that, like Italians. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's Talk always their that, hands and, yeah, very they, expressive. Uh, they're supposed to be this or, they, or that way. So he had to out-wasp or out-Yankee the Yankees. Right. And even John Sober, when he was running against Weld, called him a red-haired wasp. Yeah, you know? yeah. So that stuff still mattered. But see, she doesn't understand that she's in California. Right. She doesn't understand why this guy's so buttoned on. And well, if Kitty Dukakis was, if Kitty was raped, and yeah, what would that you, question would you, from Bernard Shaw. Yeah. <laughs> There's a new. There was a new law at the time. Yeah. And he's yeah. just. That's just Mike Dukakis. I only met him once by that time, and that's just who he was. Yeah. And uh, there were, you know, he was just an unemotional technocrat. Right. Know? Right. But. Uh, Bernie is not a uh, warm person. No. No. I mean, yeah, he doesn't. I mean, he, yeah. he's a scold. He <laughs> wants you to take, what do they call it? The bromides. He wants you to take, a bromide is a strong, like, medicine. Okay. He wants you to take your medicine. Yeah. <laughs> he wants you to, you know, uh, you'll see how people react to that. He's just not a warm person if you ever meet him in person. Really? Okay. He, you know, he is who he is. Yeah. You know, it's funny, too. There's, uh, it occurs to me. Um, not and he takes the, how he take, he oh, issues that wouldn't be, well, they would, these issues would be discussed by O'Malley, but they yeah. just, the media decided, the media, de- was it you we were talking about or the other week? Um, the media decides, you know? Oh, okay. This yeah. one, you know, screw O'Malley, we got right. Bernie. It's a good story. Right, right. And it is a story. Well, we were talking about how it's like a circus or something, entertainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's the best reality TV there is. Yeah, um, yeah we were gonna have. We have to. You have to come to my show. We got to do the thing where Aldous Huxley, who wrote uh, Brave New World, yeah, talks about television me- being used to mesmerize people mm-hmm. uh, in the context of the presidential politics. This is in '57, in the wake of the '56, which was the first one. Where they u- they used Elizabeth Montgomery, bewitched father, oh, yes. Robert Montgomery, helped make Ike look like you know he wasn't dead because okay. he had had a heart attack and a stroke. Yeah. So you know they rouge his cheeks and oh, and Ike you know had the w- just strangled the English language. Really. So. Um, but he won a huge landslide. But they wanted him to come across. You can't have somebody. He had to become. He had to come across vital and everything. Right. Because it's just not the United States watching this election. It's the right. Whole exactly. World. Yeah. yeah. You know. What, you know what else is strange? And we're almost out of time. But um, I haven't heard anyone really bring this up. But it's something I've I've noticed is the lack of um, interest in youth in this election. In that you know, like Obama, what how what, what was he forty six when he took office? Right. You know, Bill Clinton, a young president. George W. Bush, fairly young. Um, not not as not as young as Obama or Clinton. 51, 51, 51 yeah. 50 when he got elected. But this cycle, we're going to have, I mean, O'Malley's young, but, you know, Clint, uh, He's above, almost pushing 50. Yeah, yeah He's yeah. three years younger. He's about, no, he's younger than me. Isn't he 60? Yeah, he's young. I think he's 50. I O'Malley, think. I think he's about 50, I think yeah. he's a, a lot younger than me. <laughs> well, you've got uh, Hillary pushing 70, Trump pushing 70. Uh, Bernie is 75, I think. He, he'll be... Se- He's 74, so he'll be se- 75 this year. She'll be... She's born in 48, wasn't she? Or is it four, 
40. She was able to. Uh, they have a great meme, the Bernie people are putting out how Hillary Clinton supported. Uh, oh, Goldwater. Uh, Goldwater. Yeah. It actually voted from 1964. Yeah. Hey, folks, you can't, couldn't vote until 1972 until you're 21. I mean, 18. You had to be 21 to vote. That's in the Constitution until they amended it with the yeah. 26th Amendment. Yeah. So, how this 17 year old girl is running around, you know, supporting Barry and uh, Goldwater and voting for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she actually quoted too. Um, she quoted She's Barry Goldwater once in, in a debate uh, back in 2008, I think it was, when uh, the subject was gays in the military. Oh yeah, and, well, and she said, as he Barry Goldwater once said, you don't have to be straight to shoot straight. Yeah, um, but, he's a uh, libertarian. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, we we are out of time. So, John, thank you so much. Yeah, I do so love presidential politics, as everyone knows. It's kind of like. Uh, you know, I'm not into sports. To me, the, the elections are like my Super Bowl. You know, I just. <laughs> Tom Brady for president. Yeah, well, that, who knows? Anything can happen. If, it, if Trump can run, certainly Tom Brady can run. We'll, uh, we'll see how it all shakes out. But thank you all for joining me. And uh, don't forget, of course, the radio edition of Unleashed five nights a week on IPM Nation 1 at 11 p.m. Eastern. And uh, we do the television edition every Wednesday. Uh, check out uh, Word 13 from this week, too, with John, where we, uh, we talk to Paul. Is it Lion or Lions? Lions. Lions. Oh, the it's National plural. Whistleblower Center. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and that was a great conversation. And uh, we talked some presidential politics on that show, too. So you can check that out. And, uh, John, thank you. Thanks, everyone. And we'll talk at you all a little bit later.